from around the world together to discuss job opportunities and the latest news and events trending in basketball. We provide the only platform for fans, players, and basketball executives to interact and share current basketball news happening around the world. B-Ball Summit Radio, for basketball fans who want to be the first to know. Check it out. But next, we're going to have Mark and Brian with an update on our 2015 Mexico Tour team. You guys listen up for this. Guys, what's the update with that? Uh, one one of the cities is Monterey, uh, Monterey, Mexico. It's a very successful franchise. Uh, I would say it's one of the big four franchises in Mexico. Uh, and they not only have a great team, but they have a great organization, great owners. Uh, and it's it's uh, a team that paid very well, so we're excited to be to be playing against them. And we're going to be going over there a little bit earlier than we did in the past, so uh, it's going to be even be more opportunities for that team. And then it's a uh, team that's uh, affiliated with Monterey, uh, but they're playing the top division in the LMBP League in Mexico, which is the top league. Uh, it's a team called Torreon, and uh, they're, very, they're a very good franchise. So it's going to be a great, great showcase, a great look for players to not only uh, get a job overseas, but, you know, it can springboard. Uh, it can springboard a lot of players' career that they get uh, get picked, get selected to play on the team, and go in there and play well, and and uh, just go in and create a, a market value for them. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely trying to you know lock down and have all the teams ready for next week. Plus, uh, our Costa Rica tour team have more of those details as well. But uh, with these two cities, I just want to say I've been down there the last two years with our tour team, so it's, uh, first of all, it's exciting to be able to go to uh, Torreon. It's a new team we'll get to play against. I think it's going to be a great opportunity to actually get some looks for the players, um, hopefully get some guys signed. In Monterey, twice the last two years, uh, two times each year, um, and we have yet to beat them. So I'm really trying to put together a team that's going to go down and beat these guys. I'm not, uh, I don't want my coaching record to be 0-5 against them. The characteristics of when you know you're at the point where somebody should pay you to play basketball. Right. You know, uh, I remember that quote. Uh, I tend to use that even when I'm coaching uh, pre, uh, pre-game or even post-game, you know, uh, to try to motivate the guys. And, um, and, and what I mean is um, not, the players that, that we are trying to uh, influence and help and motivate these are guys who are free agents, guys who are didn't get drafted, uh, guys who are trying to establish a professional basketball career. And so many of these guys are, are – many of them are realistic in, in their opportunities. They see that they really do have a legitimate chance with hard work. And then there are – there, uh, unfortunately, there are some others who uh, have to go through this and, and, and determine that it's really not them or – they need to kind of move on and figure out if uh, trying to pursue a professional career is what they should be doing by looking at their talent level. And they got to start with themselves and, uh, and look at their, look at themselves in the mirror, evaluate their own game and, and determine, I mean, do I have the skill set for someone to decide to uh, pay money to see them play? And that's something they're going to have to ask themselves. You know, do they have the skills that, Hey, uh, should somebody think, are you that type of a player? Who would want to see those skills? Um, not a lot of players, not a lot of people, you know, your average your average fan or the average uh, person who is, is new to the game want to pay to see. So the, yep. this is the message I always send to these guys. Do you yep. think that someone should pay to see you play with the type of game that you're playing? And many of these players, uh, they have to answer that question before a guy like me, a coach and evaluator, have to answer it for them. You know, the league is called the NBA Developmental League. But uh, from the outside perspective, you know, we see how, how busy it is with the games you guys have, the travel and all that. So how much time do coaches really have to sit down, work with players, to develop them? Or is that something that players have to mainly do on their own? Uh, I think it's a combination of both. Uh, during the practice times, we do we do uh, put in put in the effort uh, before and after practice to uh, make sure they're doing a lot of skill work and uh, working on uh, making sure they're getting their shots, of course, because there's not a lot of practice time with the schedule. 
it's kind of tough. But uh, um, they do get an opportunity to uh, to be creative and show their game with all, uh, show their abilities on the floor. And I like that aspect of the D League uh, is providing opportunities to get a lot of play. The average player they don't want to stay in the gym and practice all week and then play one game at the end of the week. They really want to get out there and, and get the experience of playing game after game and truly be evaluated on um, by playing games and getting minutes. So I get that. But at the same time, I do understand the value of uh, skill development in practice. And uh, that's the kind of the challenge for the D League, uh, finding that practice time to get it. But uh, for many coaches, uh, like myself and others, I think uh, they, coaches, they do recognize that practice time is limited. So you have to be creative. Use your uh, uh, after-practice times and pre-game times for uh, skill development and allowing these guys to uh, to grow, where they work on their weaknesses during the skill development times. And then when they get out to play, making sure that they are, you know, um, tapping into their strengths on the floor and, and allowed to showcase their game in front of uh, in front of scouts, game in and game out. Today's ball, you can really be scouted over, even overseas. In the past, you know, you really didn't. Um, you maybe see, you maybe see one game or two, or you hear about a certain player's stats overseas, or you go on word of mouth. Now, there's so much uh, uh, scouting exposure that uh, players are getting now overseas. It's as if they're playing here. You can you can just find out about players, and so uh, that's why um, you know it's going to be a battle for the D League to continue to uh, um, be what you will say the best path toward the NBA uh, NBA job. And it's going to be tough, but I remain optimistic about the D League. Uh, it's growing. It was a great year last year for many young players. Uh, I think each year it's better and better. There, I mean, I was a witness to many players this past season who probably would make a lot of money overseas, but they decided to play in the D-League, and uh, it's helped them. Uh, you, you saw that in the Summer League this year. And I understand the challenge, uh, uh, that decision that a player must make. It's, it's, it's difficult. <laughs>